Hey guys, how are you doing? This is the seventh and the final video for the Golang Go Fiber Redis URL shortening backend project series. In this video, we are going to solve the issues that we can see in our shorten.go file. We'll also write the docker.compose, docker-compose file, and we'll run the program and we'll test it. So this is the agenda for this last video. And uh, <clears throat> in our shorten.go file, you can see there are a couple of issues which are being pointed out by uh, VS Code. And there will obviously be many more issues that uh, are not being pointed out. So uh, the issues that I can see right now have to do with the packages that we don't have, uh, which is the fiber package and uh, string convert package. So what I'll do is I'll take OS, I'll put it on top here, and I'll put string convert also on top. So strcomv, because we've used that package. And, <clears throat> Then I'll, uh, I need my database, right? But I also need helpers, the helpers package. So I'll say helpers. And what I also need is um, Fiverr Redis, right? That's why I'm getting all these issues, Fiverr and Redis. So I'll say github.com slash go Redis slash v8 and for fiber I'll say github.com slash go fiber slash fiber slash v2 I need my go validator uh, package as well so I'll say github.com slash asas K E V I C H slash go validator. You can just search for these packages, you'll easily find them. Uh, like I'm writing this manually, you can copy it from the internet as well. You don't have to actually write it. Then I need the UUID package. So I'll say github.com slash Google slash UUID. Because we are creating the new, uh, the unique. ID for every single custom URL. If the user doesn't pass it, this is why we need the UUID package as well. I'll go ahead and save it. <clears throat> and there are a couple of uh, packages that we don't have at the moment. And uh, in the sense, we have not uh, included that in our go.mod file. So that means we'll have to head over to our uh, Uh, terminal and we'll have to say go mod I think I'll have to go inside the API and say go mod tidy this should help us by getting all the packages that we don't have right now okay so it took a while to run the go mod tidy command but now I can see that there's an issue it's showing an issue it's because the name of this package is wrong um, after go redis I forgot to write redis again so here you'll come here and you'll write Redis. And now hopefully it should include the packages. What I'll do is I'll pause the video again and I'll uh, restart when it's done. So as you can see, it stopped running. It, it was able to import all the packages. Now let's go and check out our file. And we can see all the squiggly lines, the right squiggly lines have gone away. <clears throat> They've disappeared. That means we were able to import all the right packages. Everything looks good to me uh, now, but I see some issues with helpers.go file. So it's saying that there's a problem with the URL, right? You can see these quick lines, three quick lines here. And I know the issue already. It's basically that in this function, I've not passed URL, which is a string, which needs to work with <coughs> the URL, right? Uh, now it seems like all the issues have gone away. And what I'll do is I'll do a very quick check for the code that if everything makes uh, looks okay and makes sense and then we can go ahead and start writing the docker dash compose file while going through the code while doing just a quick check i found two small issues one is in the shorten.go file which is on line 45 c.ip needs two brackets at the end <clears throat> and in our docker file the api docker file here um, you need to add a small minus h and that's it. So those are two issues that I found. But now I see a few more issues in 
uh, both resolve and shorten.go files. So this is good. We solved one small issue and then we got so many more new issues. So let's <clears throat> try and find where the issues are. In resolve.go file on line 23, I can see it says fiber.status internal error. Of course, internal server error. I think that's why it's giving us an issue. So now all the issues in this file have been resolved. Shorten.go file. <clears throat> so there are issues here with extra limit reset. So it's saying uh, it's undefined. That means when I defined response here, there has to be some issue here, which is a small spelling mistake. It, it's supposed to be reset, not rest. So at least that issue has gone away. And here it's saying this is also re, uh, undefined that because I, it should have an X at the beginning. So it should have X rate, limit, rate remaining, right? Which is this basically. Once you save it, um, those issues have gone away, but I think something new has come up. Let me try and find out. Okay, so the issue is here on line 43, r2.get database dot context. Now that should take care of all the issues for us. <clears throat> I've like I've done a basic check, also everything looks good to me. And now is the time, right time to write our oh uh, yeah, so we also fixed our Docker file as well. So now is the right time to start writing our Docker compose dot YML file, which is uh, in my opinion a very important file in this project because this is what uh, the command will be. We we'll have Docker compose up command right to run the entire project up. So let's go give it a version. Let's give it a version three, one, two, three, or whatever. And then we'll define our services. We'll define our multiple services. Now you need to be mindful of the spacing. So this, since this, as you know, this is a YML file, you need to be mindful of the tabs that you're giving, the spacing that you're giving. And the first service is API. The second service is database. Why? Because API has its own Docker file, and database has its own, own Docker file. So our API uh, Docker file basically has uh, commands for building and running the main.go file. And our database uh, Docker file has just the commands for starting up a Redis server. Um, so uh, we'll have to start two services, right? The API service and the database service. Now for API service, <clears throat> you want to have the build, which will be API. You will have to expo like expose some ports. In our case, it is 3000. And then you'll have depends on. You don't want to just start the API server. You also want to have it dependency on the database because that's what it's going to interact with. So you'll have depends on and tab db awesome now for your database service you will have build db and ports so you already know the port is 6379 which is the default port for for redis so 6379 6379 and we can also add some volumes for our database. Data slash data, which is our folder data folder. The volume will be attached here, and that's where the data will be shown to you <coughs> once the container is stopped. All right. Um, now this looks kind of okay to me, uh, and there could be some issues with the spacing, but I'll. Uh, I'll just check it out and then we'll start the program because the code looks okay. So guys, you have to now go to your terminal and run this command <clears throat> docker dash compose up, so like space up and space minus D, which is the detached uh, containers will be run. Uh, so I've already run the, this command uh, sometime back and I got an error and that's the error that I want to now solve. So the issue that I got was in main.go file, we have uh, on line 13 and 14, we have undefined routes. And that's why uh, <clears throat> the build command failed. So what I did was I removed all my uh, Docker images so that they don't interfere with my uh, current program. And I removed all the Docker containers uh, by using these commands. So you can easily find these commands on the internet. In case you want to do that, you can remove all the images and uh, containers. 
And now what I'll do is we'll go back to our code. Okay, so this command, uh, there's no point of running this command because like I showed you, there's an error in our code. So it won't work. So let's go back to our code. And on main.go file on line 30 and 14, it was saying that there are these issues with the routes. So because that's undefined. Now, <clears throat> routes is this package, right? So I need to import it. So what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste this URL and I'll change it to routes at the end. So I'll say slash routes. And now our main.go file will have access to routes. Now what I'll do is I'll go and run that command again. Uh, which is the basic docker compose um, and uh, compose up and minus D. I'll run it again and I'll stop the video, right? Let it build and then I'll come back and we'll fix if there's any error. So the command docker compose command took a while to build and it shows us that it was built uh, like as in it shows us this, these two things. Uh, are done and it's built. So the DB and AP one, API both are built. Okay. Uh, now, because we wrote minus D at the end, which was the detached component, that means that we can interact with our terminal even when the program is running in the background. So what I'll do is I'll go back, I'll open up my Postman collection. And in this, uh, since you know that it's running on localhost 3000, because that's the, uh, you, that's the port that we set for our API server, and the API route looks like this, right? API slash v1. And the body, I'm just passing the URL. So this is a URL. I found it, uh, like I found a random video on YouTube and I, that's the URL that I'm using and it's a post request. And when I send it, I get the URL and this is the shortened URL that I get. And I say, I see that in expiry in 24 hours, rate limit is 90. Uh, nine because I've used one every ten uh, every thirty minutes we can use only ten right ten times we can use the API and rate limit reset is thirty so in twenty four hours this li link won't be there in the database now let's try one more let me change the link slightly and send it again now you can see the rate limit is changing right and reset is only twenty nine minutes are left and rate limit um, you know just eight API calls are remaining. Right, so we have used Redis, we have used GoFiber, we have used Docker, Docker Compose. Uh, we used, um, you know, rate limiting and rate limiting reset. So a lot of new things have been taught in this in this uh, particular series in the URL shortening series. So as an intermediate developer, um, that's quite a lot of knowledge to have, right? And I hope you learned a lot, uh, and I hope you're upgrading yourself slowly and now um, you can go on to the more advanced series that i have on my channel if you have the time so thank you for watching and this is where i'll end the video because our complete project is complete now so uh, do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because you'll come keep coming to see this kind of awesome uh, content all the time on my channel i'll keep building more uh, projects more and more advanced projects or even beginner friendly projects uh, on go for golang for uh, you know for this channel so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.